Uh, so we're just going to start our EOG review. We have about 20 school days until the EOG. Now, I can't remember the exact number, but we took our math check-in yesterday, April 25th. The math EOG this year for us will be on May 25th. So on a calendar, exactly a month. Your EOG for sixth grade math. It is 53 problems. Out of those 53, eight of them don't count. They call them like field test items or whatever. It's basically like state practicing questions. All right, so they're seeing if there are good or bad questions to use potentially in the future, I guess. But uh, the 45, that counts towards your score. Out of those, 15 of them are on the calculator inactive and 30 are on the calculator active. I can't remember for certain. I would guess the ones that don't count are probably split up about half and half. So it might be like 19 and 34 when you actually see it, okay? For a passing score, I don't know exactly how many you have to get right. Uh, most years, typically just like a little bit over 50% would be a passing score. Okay, so if you have 45 that count, uh, let's even go up a little bit. 24, let's say. 24 out of 45. That's over half. Specifically, that's going to be about a 53%. That's probably right around where a passing score will be. Okay? So out of 45, you need to get 24 of them right. How many you got to get out of 53 then? Well, if you got 53 problems, 24 out of 53 might be good enough if all 24 of them count, right? If some of those 24 don't count, then that's going to hurt your score because those won't count if you get them right. That makes sense? So possibly you could get lucky that way. To be safe, I could probably 100% guarantee you would be having a passing score if you get 32 out of 53. All right, 32 out of 53 means even if you get all eight that don't count, you still got at least 24 that do. That makes sense? So 32 out of 53 is right about a 60%. So that's kind of what we've been shooting for anyhow, right? You know, so 60%, that doesn't sound so bad, does it? 53%, <laughs> that sounds even easier though, right? So shouldn't be too bad. Basically, it's divided into five topics or the five main standards for sixth grade math. Ratios and proportions are the largest part of it. That is, let's say about a fourth of the test. So somewhere between 24 and 28% of your test will be ratios and proportions. The good news is that's something we did well with when we were working on it. Bad news, we were working on that like back in October, so it's been a little while. Number system. That includes a lot of stuff. That's like your division and uh, fractions, decimals, PEMDAS, that sort of stuff usually. That again is 20 to 24%. Expressions and equations, you know, like the equations and stuff you saw in this last check-in, that kind of fits there. That's again 22 to 26%. So... Most of your test is those three standards. If you can do well on those three, right there, that's enough to pass. Geometry, 
you know, your area, surface area, volume. That's a smaller part. Same with statistics, like we did at the end of the year with the box and whisker plots, mean, medium, mode, that sort of thing. That's a little bit smaller. Okay? If you really want, I could do the math on how many questions for each, but, you know, that's not that big deal. Any questions on that? Making sense, at least? All right, so for ratios and proportions, ratios and proportions are the problems that look like this. There are 24 students in a class, 18 students got a school lunch today. What percentage of the class got a school lunch? So go ahead, give it a try. Uh, Faith, what'd you get? Hmm? Seventy-five percent is correct. Ratios and proportions. In this case, this is a percentage problem. Most of these problems, you're going to have a proportion. You know, if we have a percentage problem, what do we put on the bottom right? Hundred. Are all proportion problems going to be percentages? No. But for the ones that are percentages, we had 100 on the bottom right. Over the 100 goes what? The percentage. That's what we're looking for, so that's where our blank's going to be. It's asking us what percent, so we leave that blank. On the left side, anybody remember the words? Is over of. Word problems, is and of usually doesn't work as well or part over whole, that's the one that usually works for the word problems. So if it's part over whole, and they give you two of the numbers, it should be pretty obvious, you know, it's the smaller number over the bigger number. So we got 18 over 24, which numbers do we multiply? 18 and 100, we multiply the ones that are diagonal from each other, we divide then by the 24, which, or whatever is diagonal from the blank, and like she said, that gives us 75%. Any questions? Like I said, we did real well with these back when we worked on them. So hopefully that continues. About a fourth of your test is going to be stuff like that. Number system. Not all specifically like this, but could be. Every sixth person to enter class gets a pencil. Every eighth person gets an eraser. What number person is the first to get a pencil and an eraser? Oliver? Yeah, person 24 would be the first one to get both. There are two ways to do this. If it's asking like the first person to get both or something like that, what this is looking for is the least common multiple. If you were to do this without a calculator, you just make a list. So if we got start off with person 6, what number person is the next one to get it if it's every 6? 12. Then the next one would be 18, next one would be 24, next one would be 30. In most cases, going about five of them is probably good enough. And there are a few cases where you might have to go farther. 
but you can see that after you do the next one. Then for the next one, you're doing the same thing, but you can stop as soon as you got a match. So if the first one's eight, what's the next one? 16, and then we got 24. It doesn't have to match the up and down, like the 18 and the 24. You just need any matching number anywhere. So that means the 24th person would be the one to get it. Any questions on that? On the calculator, if you hit the math button, it's underneath the yellow second button. So if you hit math, the first thing on there is LCM. That's least common multiple. So you can either hit one or hit enter. It'll bring it up with uh, LCM and half the parentheses. What you do is you put in the first number, comma, second number. You don't even have to close your parentheses. You can just then hit enter and it will give you 24. You Got to use the comma in between. The commas right about next to the 4 there. Any questions on that? Again, number system shouldn't be horrible. That's uh, right around or a little bit over 20% of your test also. Expressions and equations. Like I said, this is what we were just working on with the check-in. So we got Josh has $350 in a savings account, and each week he saves an additional $25. What equation shows the total amount that Josh has after X weeks? Sophia? No, not quite. Missing something. Dulce? Y equals 25x plus 350. For sixth grade math, if you have x and y, the equation is going to start off y equals, okay? If you've got two variables and they're not x and y, whatever the total amount is, is going to be the variable equal to everything. In this case, that's y anyhow. What they might do, and sometimes they might work this way, the 350 might go first because how much money did he have to start with? He had 350 since 350 was the starting amount and you're adding on to that. They could change the order, but it's the same thing. And then uh, it says each week he saves $25. It doesn't say he saves $25 per week, but that means the same thing, doesn't it? And remember, per means you're multiplying, so it's the 25 times the weeks. Okay? Good on that? <laughs> That's the stuff we just went over, so. <laughs> and this stuff's been a little while. And this is like early September stuff. So let's find the area on that trapezoid. If you want me to bet money on it, I would bet somewhere on your EOG you're going to see a trapezoid. Okay. Could be wrong, but I would guess not likely. Brian? All right, so for a trapezoid, first thing you want to do is you add the bases. So the bases are the two sides that are parallel to each other. So in this case, we got 10 plus 14, that's 24. After you add the bases, you're taking that number, dividing it by two, that gives you 12. Once you have that 12, 
you multiply by the height, and like you said, you get 72. That's how I would do it if I'm doing it without a calculator. You got three steps there. If you're doing it with a calculator, what you want to do is that 10 plus 14 to start with, you got to add the bases first. So you either have to do it and hit enter or put in parentheses. It's probably easier to add it and hit enter. Then once you get that 24, you can just do divided by two times six all at once, okay? But this part has to be done first with the addition. If you don't do that first and you try to put it in all at once on the calculator, the calculator follows the order of operations and does multiplication and division. Any questions? Now that we see it, we remember that like at least a little bit, hopefully. Right? Looks a little familiar. Uh, this should look even more familiar because we did it like most recently. So go ahead, find the median. Shane, 12 and a half, 12.5. All right, how many of you wrote it down like I did up on the board, put it in order from least to greatest? All right, if you put it in order from least to greatest, there were five on each half. There's 10 total. So when we split it, median's down the middle. So if I split it in half, my median goes right there. When it's between two numbers like that, you add them up, divide by two. So 12 plus 13 is 25. 25 divided by two gives you 12.5, like Shane said. Okay, any questions on that? The other way you could do it is by putting it on the list, right? Median works for that. So if you hit list, enter the 10 numbers under L1, then you hit the second button in list and you move over to calc and do those one variable stats. Median shows up on there uh, as you know, just the MED kind of towards the bottom. Either way works, right? How many of you use the list? Yeah, so a few more of y'all did that way. Most of these types of questions are on the calculator active. Are, does most mean all of them? No. So you might have to be able to do it without the calculator. Okay. Any questions?